This week, we are reviewing one of the top 20 wine varietals in the world and the top varietal that comes out of the country of Argentina. In this week's tip of the week, we're gonna talk about how do you answer the question when a server or sommelier asks you, do you want your bottle of wine decanted? All of that coming up next. Hello and welcome to Wine This Week with Scott Leak. First, I wanna talk about a couple personal things. I reached a kind of cool milestone this week when I hit 100 subscribers to this channel. When I first started this, I was doing it for myself to kind of track my own tasting notes and learn on, on this journey I'm going on this year. And I never would have thought 100 people would end up subscribing to this. So that's kind of cool. And I just want to thank everyone who's subscribed to the channel. If you haven't done so, please go ahead and do so now. Secondly, I've been doing something kind of on the down low quietly uh, the first half of this year. And that is I've been taking some classes online studying for my level one and level two award in wines with the WSET or the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. And I happen to have here the little pin I received from having passed my first level one exam. And I just got word that I passed my level two exam with distinction. So hopefully I'll be getting a, a follow-up pin for that as well. So kind of cool. It's been a great experience for me to be tasting online with some experts and, and other classmates and really learning a lot more about the soil, the climate, and what goes into making wine as well as honing my own palate. So those have been cool experiences that I really have enjoyed um, so far this year as I've been on my journey of 52 wines in 52 weeks. Let's get started on wine number 22 this week, Malbec. Malbec was originally one of the blending grapes in Bordeaux, France. You don't really find it used that much there anymore. It's not all that suitable for the climate and soil of Bordeaux. You'll find it a little bit in the Loire Valley. Usually it's blended there as well. Where you might find it as a single varietal still in France is in the area of Cahors, but even then you're not gonna find those on the store shelves as much as you will from Argentina. Malbec is huge in Argentina and particularly you're gonna find a lot of wines from the area of Mendoza. Now Mendoza is a huge part of Argentina as well. It's about the size of Illinois and it makes up a ton of the production of Argentina, which is now the fifth largest wine producing country in the world. They didn't really expect export that much of it initially. They're starting to do a lot more. Uh, quality just wasn't all that great and it's been much, much better of late. So you can get great Malbec along with dozens of other varietals out of Argentina. But Malbec, 75% of all the Malbec in the world comes from Argentina and about 20% of all the wines made in Argentina are of Malbec. So it's huge there, it's ubiquitous. This is a massive part of Argentinian wine culture. Now, when it comes to the grape itself, Argentina actually has perfect climate for it. So Mendoza is a very flat area, but it's up near the foothills of the Andes. We're talking 3,000, 4,000, sometimes 5,000 feet of altitude, but relatively flat. It's very high plateau. What the best part about this is, is that it gets nice warm days and it gets cool nights. So this grape tends to be kind of disease prone, and that's why it's not all that you know, common that much anymore in France. In Argentina, they never had the phylloxera outbreak and it is really prone to, it is not prone to disease because of the climate, the cool nights, the warm days, it ripens well. And it also tends to be a fairly low acid wine. So because Mendoza and other parts of Argentina have those higher altitudes, that cooling effect at night allows the acidity to be retained, whereas if it was just hot all the time, that acidity kind of cooks away, if you will, and you end up with these really flabby wines that are high in tannin, high in fruit, high in alcohol, but without the acidity, they're just way off balance. So this is why you tend to find really great values like this one that I paid $11 for out of Argentina. Now, 10 to $20 can get you a really good bottle of Malbec from Argentina. 20 to 25 gets you very good and 50 and above, you can get exceptional bottles of wine. So don't think that Malbec is just cheap wine. You can get it in the US as well. Washington State, particularly in Walla Walla, produces pretty good uh, Malbec. And from what I understand, China is actually starting to produce pretty good Malbec as well. Not that we're getting it here in the States. Let's get tasting this particular Malbec. Today's wine is the Altos Las Hormigas 
from Mendoza. This is their Malbec Classico 2018. I looked everywhere and could not find anything to indicate the word Classico has any official meaning in Argentina. So unlike Italy, I don't think this necessarily means anything. Reserva, Gran Reserva, those have aging requirements in, in Argentina. I don't think the word Classico means anything there. If anyone knows otherwise, please put it in the comments and let me know. But don't think that the Classico term has any real significance. This particular maker has produced this wine in concrete vats and aged it, I think, about nine months. So no exposure to oak here, which is a little unusual for Malbec. Malbec can handle some oak. It can be overpowered by it as well. In this case, they went with no oak whatsoever and aged it in concrete. Like I said, I paid $11 for this. This is 13.5% alcohol, which is a little lower than I would have thought for a Malbec, but uh, hopefully everything's in nice balance. Let's give it a shot. So starting off looking at the color, this Malbec is one of those wines, you guys can get a look at it here, that typically is kind of a dead giveaway in blind tastings because it tends to be really inky and almost purple in color. This one isn't quite there. It's it's deep garnet, I'm gonna call it, but it, it's got maybe a little bit of that purple hue, not quite as much as I would have expected from a typical Malbec. Again, we're dealing with an $11 value. I wanted to try to find a good one at a really low price and see if it was a good value. A little muted on the nose. It smells nice, but it's a little muted. I mean, maybe some black plum. There's not a whole lot else I'm picking up. Maybe a little pepper. Not unusual for a Malbec either. Okay, let's give it a taste. Not that different than the nose. It's a bit muted. It's not off balance, it's not off pudding. It's just, it's not jumping out in any one particular way. The fruit's okay. Um, like I said, that black plum's kind of coming through. All right, let's go through the basics here. Acidity, kind of medium low. Again, we kind of expect that out of Malbec, not a whole lot of acidity with a lot of these wines. They can get a little bit retained in Mendoza. I'm gonna go medium low. It's not off, but medium low on the acid. The tannins I'm gonna call medium. They're kind of doing this nice coating all around my lower jaw and tongue. They're pretty soft and smooth, but noticeable drying tannins there, medium level of those. The alcohol, I get a little heat, uh, 13 and a half. I would have maybe guessed this a little higher with what I'm tasting but I'll go medium high on the, on the alcohol, despite the number actually being kind of right in that medium range. The body is kind of a medium plus, I'll call it. It's not quite full bodied and, and Malbecs can kind of range from medium to, to full bodied. This is kind of in that medium to medium plus range on body. And the finish, I'm gonna go kind of medium low. Malbecs are not known for having really long finishes and this one doesn't have a particularly long finish either, but then again, I don't get a whole lot initially on the palate either. So let me give this one more try. It's fine, but oftentimes I'll get a Malbec that'll be a little bit more peppery than this, fuller bodied, maybe this kind of milk chocolateness to it. Sometimes you even get mint or some herbal notes. And it can range from red to dark fruits. This could be red plum, it could be black plum. I'm not getting blackberry, I'm not getting cherry. It's nice, it's perfectly fine. I'm guessing when I have this with food, it's gonna be a little bit better, uh, but it's a little it's a little underwhelming. Uh, at $11, I'd, I'd say it's still a decent value. Everything's balanced decently. 
the length not that long, the intensity of it isn't that, it's not that intense, and it's not all that complex. I'm gonna score this five and a half points on my 10 point scale. Again, with five being like right down the middle, one sucks, 10's the best one you've ever had, five being average. Yeah, I'm gonna give this, I think I'm even being generous calling it a five and a half. And I've had Malbecs that have blown me away. This just isn't one of them, unfortunately. So gonna call this five and a half points. Pairing wise with this and, and most Malbecs, it, it doesn't need a really over the top, really powerful entree. It does go well with good grilled meats. And I would say because the tannins are a little lower than some of the other bold uh, reds, this might be better with a leaner cut of meat. And I'm even thinking like, because there's a little pepper there, like a black and blue bison burger. So get a leaner cut of, of bison, crust that with some cracked pepper, put some melted blue cheese on top of it. That might be a really nice pairing with this. A higher end Malbec, I might have said, pair it with lamb and some mint. Again, mint can sometimes come through, herbs can come through, and they can help bring out more of the fruit. And now that I think about it, I might make sure to add some herbs to my dinner. Uh, I'm grilling tonight and yeah, maybe that'll, that'll help bring some of this fruit alive a little bit more. Yeah, I wish I liked this more. I'm kind of bummed out. I wanted to find like this awesome $11 bottle and be like, man, this blows away $30 Malbecs and it, it doesn't. Nevertheless, give a Malbec a try. And if you're looking to spend $11 and that's your budget, you're gonna be perfectly content with this, but maybe uh, maybe shoot for more like a $20, $20 Malbec next time would be my vote. So you're at a nice restaurant, you order a bottle of good red wine and your server, the sommelier asks you, would you like this bottle decanted? Short answer is yes. If they ask, do you want that bottle decanted? It's probably their subtle way of saying, if this was my bottle, I would have it decanted. So if they ask if you want it decanted, just say yes. I can't think of a single reason why if they ask you, you would say no. Now, there are going to be times though, depending on where you're at, the level of knowledge of the person waiting on you, whatever, they might not ask and it should be decanted anyway. So how do you know when to ask, should this wine be decanted? First of all, let's understand what decanting is and what it does. And I'm gonna use an analogy here. Think about the last time you woke up after having had a beautiful night of sleep. I'm talking eight straight hours plus, you barely moved, you wake up and you do this. You do that awesome morning stretch. You are getting the blood flowing. You are getting oxygen moving to all the muscles in your body that have been sitting there still and have it moved for eight straight hours. That is what we're doing when we're decanting a bottle of wine. We are letting that wine stretch out because it has been tightly trapped in that bottle for years. It needs to breathe, it needs oxygen. It is going to help let that wine mellow out. So what are some of the things you can look for and how can you make this a good decision? How can you know this wine needs to be decanted? Number one, I talked about this in the video on Cabernet a couple weeks ago on bottle and cork pre presentation. Taste for you know the faults in the wine potentially, taste for the temperature of the wine, which I talked about in the video not that long ago as well. But the last thing you wanna look for when you're evaluating that wine is, should this wine be decanted? So in that little taster sip, is the wine kind of muted like the Malbec was today? If the fruit's not quite there, if the acid or if the tannins are kind of harsh and astringent and really, really drying, that wine is probably gonna benefit from being decanted. So if you notice any of those things, when you take that little taster sip, ask for that bottle of wine to be decanted. The other thing, quick little clue you can look for is the shape of the bottle. And I'm not gonna go into this too much because I will do a separate video on how to actually decant at home, but look at the shape of the bottle. This white wine glass or white wine bottle, Pinot Noir, um, some Rhone bottles are gonna have this nice smooth drop versus the high heavy shoulder that this Malbec bottle has. Sometimes that can be really helpful in decanting and trapping sediment if an older bottle has some sediment in it, which is another reason to have a wine bottle uh, decanted. 
But if you're ordering something off a menu at a restaurant, chances are you're not getting an aged wine, you're getting a wine that's still fairly young and it needs decanting and aeration because of how young it is. It needs to oxidize, it needs to actually age a little bit. That's what the decanting is gonna help do. So if you notice this style of bottle that's being presented to you, that is another little clue I look for to see should this be decanted. A white wine can be decanted. You can absolutely decant your white wines. You don't need to, but you can. There's no harm in doing it. Sparkling wines, probably the only exception I would say that you shouldn't decant. However, as always, there's an exception to a rule. Certain vintage champagnes that are pretty old might actually benefit from some very gentle light decanting. But overall, you're at a steakhouse, you get a bottle of big, bold red wine, I would ask for it to be decanted. If they ask you if you want it decanted, always say yes, that's their clue to tell you this wine should be decanted and that's how I would drink it if I were you. The last thing I'll tell you, and I know this is a pet peeve of some servers and some sommeliers, and that is don't wait to the last minute to order your wine, order your entrees. If you're gonna have a nice leisurely evening, you're gonna start off with some cocktails, some appetizers, and then order dinner, and then order your bottle of wine once you figure out what dinner is, you've wasted or, or missed out on an opportunity to let a really good bottle of wine aerate during that whole process. So if you can, kind of at least know, you know, you're gonna have steak. If, you're, if you don't know whether you're gonna have the tomahawk or the ribeye or the filet, don't worry about that too much. Pick a bottle of wine that you and your guests are gonna enjoy. Go ahead and get it ordered, get it opened, get it decanted, and let it sit there on the table throughout the course of your evening, opening up and decanting. Maybe even put a little bit in your glass, that'll give it more decanting, more aeration in your glass than it will even in the decanter. And every once in a while, take a smell and enjoy the process of watching that wine unfold and see how it evolves over the course of the evening, rather than waiting for the last minute to order your bottle and not having enough time to benefit from the decanter. Thank you for watching another episode of Wine This Week. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe. Join me next week as we move on to a very underrated white wine varietal from France known as Marsan. Until then, keep trying new wines, and as always, cheers.